In this video, I am going to help you solve your dog's allergy problems. Please stay until the end of the video because I am going to share so much knowledge, tips, and practical things you can do in order to determine what sort of allergy you are dealing with and more importantly, how to solve the problem. So let's get straight into the video. Welcome to this dog allergy seminar. We are going to give you some incredible tips and actually help and we are going to stop your dog from incessant itching and biting which has to be one of the worst things you can experience as a pet owner. What are we going to cover in this presentation? Well, the three different types of allergies, they're not just one, there's several reasons why your dog might be itching or might be reacting to a specific allergen. We are going to identify them just to make sure we are on the right page and we are going to teach you when to ignore vet advice and why sometimes you have to ignore and go against your vet and the last thing i am going to cover is how to actually solve the problem that you are having i'm not going to try to sugarcoat it i'm going to give you some practical advice so that the dog is not on steroids and can fulfill your dreams of living a happy life together. So the first thing I want to say is that coping with an itchy dog is very painful. Uh, they are in pain, they scratch themselves incessantly, you don't really know how to stop it, what to do. It's very hard because they can't talk but you see them in distress, they constantly gnaw at their paws and they are in pain and it's very very stressful it's stressful for you it's stressful for them it's stressful for your family because you have to keep going back to the vet because everyone asks you about the dog red patches the the nose the ears the paws it's all a bit confusing and it's very very stressful so let's let's address the the the, the problem you are having who the heck are we? Well, I am the owner of a chain of independent pet shops in the north of England. Uh, the pet quarter, uh, there you can see Leo, who is the love of my life and one of the biggest reasons, if not the only reason, why I started caring so much about dogs. So that's who we are. We special we specialize in solving problems with nutrition. We only sell things that are good for dogs and we go against the mainstream pet food industry. And why do we go against the pet food industry? This is because we actually care about your dog. So let's take two different things and very common treats and food one will be your dentist sticks or any other dental stick and on the back of the packet you will see cereals meat and animal derivatives you will see oils and fats and you will see derivatives of vegetable origin those are not good ingredients to put in your dog's body the second one would be win a lot and again, you will see meat and animal derivatives, you will see cereals, and you will see various sugars. So whenever we say that we go against the mainstream pet food industry, we go against the mainstream that tells you to feed your dog cereals, that makes you go to your vet on a recurring basis, that aims to make you spend a lot of money within the industry without you getting anything back. So if that's you, listen to this because this is very valuable information. So there's three main types of allergies. The first one is going to be your food allergy, your environmental allergy and your breed specific allergy. So they are not either or, 
you can have a food allergy and an environmental allergy, or you can have a breed specific and a food allergy, but we are going to break them down in three. What exactly is dermatitis? Dermatitis, any itis, means inflammation. At its core, it's inflammation. Whenever you hear these terms, pancreatitis, colitis, dermatitis, itis is inflammation. Your dog's skin is getting inflamed. There is something in your dog that it's eaten that's causing aggravation to their skin. Now, there's a very valuable thing I want to share with you is that dogs do not secrete salivary amylase to break down starches. They make their own blood sugar. So amylase is the enzyme that breaks down carbohydrates in their mouth. And excess carbohydrates and poor quality meat sources are the problem in 99% of food-induced dermatitis. So the first thing we are going to do is take a look at the food you are feeding the dog. So if your dog has been itching for quite some time, you will have taken your dog to the vet and some vet's solution is to recommend a hypoallergenic food, either Royal Canin, Hills, Purina or any other mainstream food that you can buy pretty much anywhere. Prescribe a steroid course after steroid course or Apoquil, which is another, another medicine that masks the symptoms and just see how they do. Come back, come back, come back, another course of steroids, come back, another bag of food and come back and the problem never seems to go away. The meds will definitely mask the problem but they will not eliminate it. And another thing to understand is that vets run businesses and they need to make money and you are a source of money for that vet. So always remember that vets are running businesses just like everyone else. I have selected three different bags of food that you can see to your right hand side. One is Royal Canin, the second one is Hills and the third one is Purina. And again, let's check the ingredients of these bags and let me tell you these are not good. We have vegetable fibers, we have poultry protein, which is very vague. We have animal proteins and we have animal fats, which again are very, very vague. Wheat, corn, brewer's rice, barley, beet pulp, poultry fat. We have meat and animal derivatives, derivatives of vegetable origin, sugars. Yes, sugars. So, Let me ask you one question. If your vet suspects your dog has a food allergy, your vet prescribes you with a bag of food, say Hills, Royal Canin, Purina, whatever they might recommend, and you turn that bag of food over and we see animal fats, will we know which animal is causing the aggravation to your dog's skin. We will not. Why? Because these manufacturers will use the cheapest source of protein available at any given time. And because they do not pin themselves down to one specific ingredient or one specific protein, you do not know what you are feeding the dog, which makes your dog carry on itching. Think about that. So a food intolerance or allergy is the most common these days. Poor diets, cereal-based foods and too many carbohydrates in the food and poor quality treats 
So it is likely that if your dog has a food allergy and is on a course of steroids or is not on a course of steroids but the dog is incessantly itching, if we take a look at the food and the treats we are giving the dog, we can have a dog which is back to being happy and back not itching and that's precisely what we are going to tackle. So the ingredients are king in your dog's diet. Uh, you need to do this with me right now if you can and you are going to pick your bag of food and all the treats you give the dog. And we are going to do this exercise together. We are going to read the ingredients and we are going to check for inflammatory ingredients. What causes inflammation? Again, too many carbohydrates. If dogs could eat carbohydrates, they would chew the food. They don't. They wolf them down. Wolfing food down is a trait of a carnivore. So we are going to look for ingredients such as rice, wheat, barley, pea starch, tapioca, again meat and animal derivatives because if we are not feeding the dog turkey or chicken or salmon or venison or rabbit, we will not know which animal we are feeding our dog. Anything with meat meal, so meat meal 22% if your bag has that sort of nomenclature on the back, we will want to ditch it. Animal fats, again, corn, soya, yeast and sugar. Yes, sugar is very, very prevalent in pet food these days. It makes your dog or cat addicted to it and it's pretty inflammatory and it's pretty horrible to put in your dog's food. But from now on, because we are going to read the ingredients for everything we give our dog, we will not have that problem. So you might have heard that a grain-free food is better for your dog. And I do agree, sort of agree. There is a grain-free lie at the moment and manufacturers are very, very savvy and they have very savvy and powerful marketing teams. And a grain-free food these days might be just as bad. Why? Because they will swap brown rice or white rice or any other grain for tapioca, white potato or pea starch, which are, yes, high glycemic carbohydrates your dog has a hard time digesting. So we need to reduce the overall amount of carbohydrate, irrespective whether they come from rice or they come from white potato, we can have sweet potato in a food and that food might comprise 60% of the carbohydrates. So if we have a low glycemic carbohydrate such as sweet potato, but that sweet potato is 60% of the bag, yes, is the, grain, is the food grain free? Absolutely. Is it a bad food? Yes, it is because we have 60% sweet potato. So grain free doesn't necessarily mean better. So be very, very savvy with what you are doing. The single protein food, aka the elimination diet, is in my opinion the best way to see whether we are making an impact and whether we are tackling the issue or not. What is the elimination diet? Well, it's the only way really to determine what your dog is sensitive to without an allergy test. An allergy test will cost you several hundred pounds at the vet. You can read more about allergy tests on our nutrition blog, which is at thepetquarter.co.uk. I'm going to link it in the bio. And we will be sticking to a single protein food so that we can roll out allergen. Now, we want this food to have a high meat content and to have very limited amount of carbohydrates. So we are going to choose one single protein. It could be chicken, it could be salmon, it could be 
rabbit and we are just going to stick to that particular protein. We are going to assess, therefore, whether our dog is reacting to that single protein or not. And if the dog is okay on that protein, that means your dog, voila, will be happy and not have a reaction to that particular protein, which is phenomenal news. And we will have solved the problem with nutrition and not steroids. So what about treats then, you will, you will ask? Well, you can choose treats that are from the same protein as your food of choice. We recommend 100% natural treats. You can feed the dog beef skin or chicken pate or wild boar meat, but we recommend 100% natural treats of the same protein you are currently feeding. But you can also give the dog treats if you barter with a daily food allowance. If they improve within three to four weeks, you will be able to introduce all the meats. But again, one at a time. We don't want to be introducing all these different things because we will not know what's working and what's not working. In short, we want to choose a single protein food. We want to use the same meat source for treats. We want to reduce the carb intake, grain or no grain, it doesn't really matter. And we are always going to read the ingredients for everything we give the dog from now on. So environmental allergies are another common source of allergies and your dog being itchy. They can occur seasonally, uh, spring and summer tend to be the most common. Um, and what could they be? Well, just like in humans, pollen, grass, mold spores, insects. We don't really know, um, but they occur seasonally. Unfortunately, you can only mitigate it. Uh, with food, you can actually tackle the problem and you can solve the problem 100%. But with environmental allergies, we can only mitigate the problem. So here's some tips that you can use uh, for your dog. So you can keep the dog off the grass or where you suspect they get a reaction. You can wipe their paws before and after each walk so that those paws are coming into your house with the pollen, with the spores, and then your dog keeps having that same reaction. And we are going to use gentle shampoos, oatmeal, aloe vera, coconut butter, or just any other gentle shampoo if needed, but not too often because we don't want to damage the skin of our dog. And the third main source of allergies is breed specific. If you have one of these fellas here, it is likely that your breed will be more prone to having an allergy. So these are called designer dogs. Uh, if you have a blue Frenchie, if you have an XL bully, if you have a cockapoo, if you have a pug, these dogs, the problem is that they have been bred to look a very specific way. This comes with problems and you can only feed them well and make sure you look after them. But if your dog has been bred to look a very specific way with a very specific look, with a very specific color, that might have an adverse impact on your dog's health. And that's unfortunately the way it is. Certain breeds as well come with certain health problems. I have a friend with a, with a Burbel, with a South African Mastiff, and the dog has uh, inherent dermatitis. So we have looked at the ingredients, we have looked at the dog's diet, and the dog is doing phenomenal with a food we have chosen, and the dog's happy. 
Is the dog itchy sometimes? Yes. Is the dog healthy? Absolutely. Same with a Dalmatian. You can only mitigate those symptoms, but you have to feed them well. And listen, we could sell all sorts of things, but we will not out of principle. So if you go on the petquarter.co.uk, you can choose one of our foods with confidence. You can see that we only have a limited amount of brands and you can you can shop with confidence because it is likely that with any of our foods your dog will be a lot happier and will stop itching just like we have solved allergies for hundreds of dogs at this point and if that you wish to book a consultation with us uh, you can visit our website and we will love to assist you in person. So the best thing you can do is to put the dog on a single protein food, which is high in meat, carbohydrate limited. Make sure all the treats are on point. If possible, they should be the same protein as the food. You should Cut out anything that doesn't look like meat, that isn't designed for dogs. So no cereals, no wheat, no barley, no Weetabix, for example. That is very, very common. And your dog will thank you for it. Um, you can go down to the petquarter.co.uk, select a food, and you will see that our foods really, really do the trick and will solve the problem you are having. If you wish to book a consultation, you can do so by clicking in the link description. Thank you so much and leave our comments below.